Okay, now I'm going to put the uh, Z lead screw in. And like I say, if you buy these for me, they're already going to come pre cut with the uh, coupling probably already on there. So if not, uh, I'll do a separate little short video uh, probably at another time showing how to cut a lead screw and uh, how to file it and get this to where it will, will screw on there. So it's not hard to do. Okay, now all you do is take this lead screw and run it down there. You can see the coupling, or I'm sorry, the uh, Acme nut that's right there in that bracket. And again, you just kind of screw it in so you can feel it going in. And I'm going to go ahead and screw this on down, and it should line up. Yeah, there it's starting to go in that start starting to go in that bracket right there. Okay. Now I want to get my Z axis. Sorry for stepping in front of the camera here. Uh, I'm going to get my Z axis stepper motor, and again I've got a couple of spacers for this as well. So uh, let me get the uh, nuts off of here as well. I just kind of had these all snugged up so this stuff wouldn't get lost. And for this one you won't use the nuts because these are tapped holes. Because it would be pretty impossible to get in there and get a, get a nut on that. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to set the long screws because it doesn't really matter how long they go in. They can go all the way down in there. Okay, but the short screw, I've got a shorter screw in the back. In fact, I've only got one of them right now. i got to find another one or cut one off. But uh, you don't want it to go in there very far because it will... Oops, I'm going to have to tighten that, I have to tighten that lead screw first. Okay, let me set this back on there. Make sure that I've got these loose so it just will slide in on there, like so. Okay, now I want to snug these up. Again, going back and forth between the two so that I don't over tighten and crack that coupling. Okay. Actually, these screws here are probably too long. I just didn't have any other ones, so they don't really hurt anything once they run down in here so but I think what's happening is they're hitting these screws I need to put a shorter screw right here these are, I'll bet you these are half inch yep these are half inch so I need to shorten those put a 3 8 in there there's a 3 8 right here Oh wait, one of those was a 3 -eighths. 
Okay, so I can put the three eighths in there instead of the half inch, and that'll get the screw out of, out of the way for these other screws. Okay. Now that'll screw on down in there. And you don't have to crank down really super hard on these either. Uh, you, you do want, uh, you know, you don't want it to slip, but you also don't want to crank down so hard to strip out that thread, which it's 11 gauge material, so it should take a good bit to uh, strip it out. So now we've got the Z-axis ready. And now we're ready to hook up some uh, controller Okay, we've got all the stepper motors installed, all the lead screws in installed, all the couplings tightened up. Uh, now comes the part that uh, every, I think probably everybody looks forward to. And that is the part of hooking the controller up. So I'm going to pull this forward a little bit. Um, I've got the controller right here. And I've got a little room on the back of this table to set the controller. So this is real easy to connect. That's why I love these Xylotex kits. Uh, you know, sometimes I sound like I'm a Xylotex spokesperson or something, but uh, one reason why I like them is they're just so easy. It's plug and play. It, it just doesn't get any easier. Now. I'm, a, I'm more of a mechanical guy than I am an electronic guy. I don't like fooling with electronics and, you know, I mean, I don't mind if I've got good instructions showing me put this wire to this wire and this one to this one. I'm okay with that. I can read directions. But it's a whole lot simpler when you just take this, for example, this blue wire. I know that the yellow is the Y, the blue is the A, which is going to be slave to the Y, so that's going to be either one of these. I can put it in either one. And these little Molex plug connectors are made such that you can't plug it in wrong. I mean, you really have to uh, force it to do it to, because they've got a little slot on there. They're really only going to go in here one way. So you just make sure you've got them going the right way and then after you plug it in you can look make sure the red red green green black black set and so on so pretty uh, pretty hard to screw it up okay this one is the red which is the X axis so this is the stepper motor driving the X axis so I'll just plug this one up looks good and then the one I have left is the green, which is the Z-axis. So you can just hook this one up. And there we go. So wiring this thing up is as simple as that. It's all plug and play. Uh, we have a uh, power cord here to connect to the controller box. Works just like you know, just like you plug one in the back of a computer. So you plug that up. Uh, let me get it some power here. And when you turn this thing on, you should hear these motors kind of kick in and lock in. So all that's working correctly. Now I will get, uh, gotta fire up my computer over here. Should have already had that turned on. And we'll connect up, like I said, these come with a three foot uh, straight through parallel cable. Uh, really at three foot, I don't think is long enough. I, I will be buying a six foot one that we will ship with all these kits as well if you buy package C from me. Uh, but what I do is I just connect several of them together because like right here I've got coming off of my computer I've got a six foot, a three foot, now another three foot, so I've got twelve foot there. 
and those are all connected together. So we'll let this computer get booted up and we will be ready to test this thing out. Okay, I've got everything uh, fired up, the computer's all booted up, so I'm going to turn the controller on now and see if this thing will jog around a little bit. Okay, one thing I wanted to show you all, when you first start one of these things up, because the uh, y-axis is slave, let me cut this controller off, you want to make sure that your gantry isn't kind of cocked, uh, and one good way to do that is to make sure by just touching it off the front, but what I always tell people, because since they're new to this and they, if they hand turn this and get it right up to the front and then they accidentally hit the button going the wrong way and it tries to go that way more it may screw something up so better to use some spacer blocks so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this controller back on and I'm going to jog it back towards the front and let's see if I'm getting close here oh, I've still got a ways to go Okay, now I'm pretty close. Now you can turn this controller off. And just eyeballing this, it looks to me like that side is closer than this side. And it probably happened when I was putting in those lead screws. But what you can do is you can take this, you know, something that's three quarters or whatever. This is like a three quarter piece of plywood. And I can run that to space that like that. And then I can take this one and while these, while these are... While the controller's turned off, you can actually turn these. So I can set that. So now I know I've got a uniform gap between the two. So now when I turn the controller back on, should I go, should I jog it and accidentally hit it the wrong way, at least it's got three quarters of an inch to go before it really crashes into anything, which isn't really going to hurt it anyway. But now that I've got that set, I can jog it back. Okay guys, looks like we got her back running. All from uh, this morning when I started, it wasn't nothing but a bunch of pieces. But uh, this is probably going to be the last little segment video as far as installing it. I'm going to do another one. I'll show you how I made this uh, how I made this tabletop with these little, I made some maple uh, things and it just sits on there and when you tighten them up uh, it goes around and fastens to the, uh, the side of this flange. So I'll probably do a little short video on how to make one of those. Uh, of course Next thing is, is for me to put the table on it, put the router on it, and run some programs on this thing. So I'm going to try to get some of those up and upload it uh, very soon too. But anyway, I think, uh, like I said, if there's anything I didn't show in detail, and, and also keep in mind when you buy one of these, you're going to get a set of plans too. So you'll have the drawings as well as the videos to go off of uh, for instructions. But if there's anything I didn't show very good, or you couldn't see it up, you know, up close enough or whatever, let me know what it is and I will shoot another little short video trying to cover whatever uh, I didn't cover well enough to start with. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one. I appreciate you watching and uh, you know, hopefully you get one of these things and, and get a CNC in your shop. Thanks again.